CC and Romeo, Monday through Saturday on 93.5 k Yo, it's 935 k and we are so excited. Romeo and myself, yes. we've got Senator Alex Padilla with us this morning. Good morning, Senator. And first off, we just want to say congratulations on being our first Latino senator. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, CC. Good to see you. And uh, via this uh, stream here, mm. uh, you know, this new day and age, it's not just listening to music and your voices on the radio, but uh, being able to stream and uh, have an exchange like this, uh, Kind of exciting. Not a typical thing that I do uh, in the United States Senate, <laughs> but uh, born and raised in L.A., born and raised in the San Fernando Valley, listening to K Day. It's uh, good to be part of uh, uh, the modern time. Well, Absolutely, I got to ask yes. you this. How did it feel when you got the call saying it was official? You are now a senator. What did that feel like for you and your family? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, the video. The, uh, the governor's uh, team put out a little uh, uh, two-minute clip of uh, our conversation and uh, look, I, I honestly just couldn't help but to have this stream of emotions running through me. The first thing I thought of was uh, my parents. Mm. Uh, for those who don't know the story, my, my parents are immigrants from Mexico, like so many others, right? They came in pursuit of the American dream. My dad worked for 40 years uh, uh, scrambling eggs and flipping pancakes. He was a short order cook. Uh, and for the same 40 years, my mom used to work cleaning houses, just trying to provide for my sister, my brother, and I. And, you know, whatever I've done in life, I owe so much to them for their love, for their support, their discipline, and their example. And now I get to be here uh, to be a voice for not just my own family, but for the millions of hardworking families around California like them. Yeah. Right. And it's a, and it's, a, it's an exciting moment for us Latinos. You know, um, we always talk about, Senator Padilla, that, you know, we don't have enough voices. We don't have enough voices voicing our concerns. But the fact that you are the first Latino senator it's just a celebration that we celebrate with you. We are happy with you, happy you. for you. We are so proud. Thank you. Yeah, I know it's been a, a ton of emotion uh, ever since that, uh, that call and that Zoom. I recognize what a significant opportunity uh, this is, the, the job of the United States Senator and what you can do with it. A tremendous responsibility, right, to, to represent not just our community, but uh, serve all uh, Californians. Uh, I'm the first Latino to represent California in the Senate, mm. hopefully not nice. the last. That's right. Uh, but uh, you know, look at all the issues that we're grappling with in education and health care and uh, economic opportunity. We know that uh, Latinos make up 40% of the state of California, so everything impacts us and we impact everything. Uh, and nothing is more pressing and urgent than uh, this COVID-19 pandemic. Our community has been hit the hardest. And so uh, this means the stakes are high to to do the best job I can. Yes, yeah, Katie Morning Show, CC and Romeo and Senator Alex Padilla. And of course, Black and Brown was, is what CC and I preach every day Absolutely. on the KD Morning Show. So yeah. we definitely have your back. But when you walk into the halls after you were announced as Senator, who was the first Senator that actually said hello to you? Like, what was that moment like when you seen someone in the hallways? <laughs> the, uh, you know, I, if, I, if I recall correctly, it was the, the, I got sworn into the Senate the same day that, uh, you know, President uh, Biden was mm-hmm. inaugurated, Vice President Harris was inaugurated California zone uh, was in a, a temporary office space in, in the basement of the Russell Senate office building. And we're walking down the hallway and uh, uh, one of the people who started working for me literally that day says, oh, uh, Senator Tester from, uh, uh, from Wyoming is walking in the other direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of, kind of recognize him. You know, he's got a pen like this, right? That a lot of members wear. And so I knew he was a Senator. So we stopped, said hello. And he said, hello, congratulations. Welcome to the Senate, and you're a lot taller than I thought. <laughs> so I love not, it. Not, not too many uh, six four Latinos walking around, but uh, you know, I guess I'm, I'm hard to miss in a crowd. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Now, Senator, we have to ask you: Was it a difficult transition, um, transitioning uh, into you know the Senate? Uh, you know, it's almost like I haven't had a chance to stop and catch my breath. It's been so busy uh, since I got here. Uh, you know, to have a tremendous respect for for the Senate as as an institution, the power for it to do good, not always the most effect, efficient and, and functional body, but to, I like to think that my uh, prior years of of service uh, at the city of Los Angeles and in, in the state of California in the Capitol as a state senator, and then of course the Secretary of State has gone a long way in preparing me for sort of the job itself. But uh, even more important than uh, 
you know, knowing how a bill becomes a law is really the, the, the values and the perspective that I try to bring, you know, growing up in the community, uh, the community of Pacoima mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of communities like it uh, throughout the throughout the state, you know, bringing the values uh, and the, the life experiences of working class people uh, that, uh, you know, we, we like to think is heard a lot in Congress, but probably not heard enough over time. And uh, now I get to uh, bring my story and the, uh, the story of a, uh, people like us. That's a beautiful thing. I'm still thinking 6'4". You might have to suit up for the Lakers this year. I'm just saying. You might just have to. All right, let's switch it up. Hip-hop. I can box out. I can box <laughs> crash the boards. Man. There you go. There we go. Dennis Robbins status right there. Get your rebounds. All right, let's talk about hip-hop celebration and how this all yeah. come together. This is so such a big day for the world of hip-hop and K-Day. So let's talk about it. Yeah. No, it's, you know, so this is perfectly timed, right? You're mm-hmm. asking what it's like being in the center. I've had a chance to chime in already on the infrastructure package and COVID response and, you know, healthcare issues out there. But, you know, it comes across my desk. Hey, Senator, did you know that what, you know, uh, the Senator from New York partnered with the Senator from Louisiana to introduce a hip hop uh, resolution, you know, mm. uh, August 11th being a hip hop day in the United States of America. Like, well, on the one hand, it, that's great. Right. Hip hop has a tremendous cultural impact mm-hmm. uh, on the country. I grew up listening to it, right? When listening to Katie back in my high school days when it was on AM. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as I'm reading the language, I'm like, wait a minute, there's no reference to, to West Coast. What's going on here? That's oh, right. I know it started in New York, right? I get the East Coast, West Coast thing. Can't we all just get along? The hip hop's come a long way. And of course, you know, West Coast artists have had a tremendous impact on, on rap and hip hop in general. So, we had to chime in with some language, make sure we represent. Uh, and uh, now it affords us an opportunity like this to enjoy music, enjoy the, you know, have some fun with it, but uh, recognize the, the historical and cultural impact that it's had uh, on the country. So, um, you know, again, bringing my life experience to the United States Senate. Yeah. And and you talk about how hip hop has an impact on the country. Uh, Senator Padilla, how has hip hop impacted your life in particularly? Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's, uh, I know there's some great uh, artists in this day and age uh, still have a stations program, but whether it's on Pandora or in, on the radios, I'm driving around when I'm back at home. Uh, but really, I grew up with it. You know, growing up in Los Angeles uh, in, the, in the 80s and uh, in the 90s, so uh, a lot of the pioneering artists that came out of Southern California, including, you know, the impact of NWA, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, years later, you know, Tupac from the Bay Area, uh, California love, baby. Uh, so it's uh, oh. both something that I grew up with, enjoying, listening to, kind of spreading when I went off to college and everywhere that I've, I've traveled. Uh, you know, it was a way to bond with our your friends when you're hanging out in high school uh, and that sort of thing. And to see that the genre evolve, you know, have regional influences now uh, and a lot to, to celebrate and discuss. And um, I will share this story. I came across an article about uh, uh, De La Soul. I know they're not West Coast, but De La right. Soul was big. Uh, when I was uh, younger, and uh, I sit in Judiciary Committee next to Cory Booker, right, one of the two African American uh, uh, Democrats in the United States Senate, and we're about—he's a few years older than I am, mm-hmm. and so I get a chance to share with him via text. Hey, did you catch this piece on De La Soul? And he turns to me and he says, "I don't think I've ever had any sort of discussion about hip hop, let alone a group with any other member of the Senate before until now. So, <laughs> wow, I, I love other. it. I one brother that we can uh, uh, talk music and, uh, and hip-hop with. Man, that is crazy. Well, just a story about them finally it. getting the rights to their music and all that. I mean, because that was awesome. First of all, you know your hip-hop. Yes, he knows does. his hip-hop. Well, you know, he's so, West Coast. You know what I mean? Let's say that. We're going to celebrate on K-Day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We got the mixes live all day long. How should the rest of the world celebrate hip-hop today in your eyes? Oh, uh, doing the same thing, you know, listen, listen, listen. There's probably some, you know, some uh, familiar stuff we all gravitate to, but uh, but tune in and learn what you haven't heard, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's an artist you haven't heard from uh, from a few years back or some of the emerging artists, and then have conversations, right, just like we're doing right now. It is not just okay, it is a good thing to say, you know, not just who your favorite artists are, but how has it impacted you, uh, you know, from music to, to clothing to language, uh, and everything in between. It's a lot more uh, impactful, uh, you know, across society than uh, people may think about. And uh, it's important to recognize. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, listen, I feel like just, you know, being, you know, in the city all the time, 
talking about music. We're on K Day. I really hip hop gave us our voice. That's true. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I love the fact that we get to honor it today. Um, Senator Alex Padilla, I want to talk to you really quick. We're gonna switch gears here. How important is it for California and the nation to get vaccinated right now? Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for for you know letting us chat about this for a couple of minutes because uh, you know, hip hop's fun and all, but uh, we also know that music can uh, lead us to talk about some very serious matters and serious mm-hmm. issues. I remember way back in the '80s, right? That song, you're, "We're All in the Same Gang," and now yes. aging myself. Now, you know, it's music and and celebrity can be used to advance important social causes. Um, and this day and age, is nothing more uh, uh, pressing for our community than the COVID nineteen pandemic. We knew that from the beginning of the pandemic that it hits communities of color the hardest, Yes, right? Black and brown, black mm-hmm. and brown. We're the ones that get it more easily. We tend to have more underlying uh, health conditions, you know, maybe not equitable access to health care or quality health care. And so it is especially important uh, for us to get vaccinated, uh, try to protect our health, try to protect our lives and that of our families. For people that are frustrated that, you know, why do kids uh, have to wear masks? at school or you know the struggle of a you know remote learning uh, yeah. last school year you know we my wife and i are trying to raise three gentlemen three boys uh zoom school was not easy uh and, or why the economy is not more open right do, do we sit indoors do we sit outdoors why are restaurants only half full if we want to get past this thing we need to get vaccinated so if you haven't yet what are you waiting for make an appointment vaccines are free you don't need proof of insurance any of that just sign up get vaccinated and anybody who's listening if you've already been vaccinated thank you thank you thank you now tell a friend yeah definitely have to tell a friend yes. and me being a black man i know there's a lot of black people in the community that don't want to do it i was one of those senator but then i realized we had to report it every day cc and i mm-hmm. i made that switch now i push it i am vaccinated so is my queen so is my mom so is my sister my sister had COVID. So I knew it was important to turn that corner. So I'm glad we're talking about this today. And it's so important that people do have to get vaccinated for sure. Yeah, it's real, man. It's real. Thankfully, in my family, you know, we're, we're our immediate family is COVID. We've been taking care of ourselves. We do have some extended family, some uh, mm-hmm. uh, aunts and uncles that have recovered from COVID, thank God. But some friends of the family that, uh, you know, lost a parent, lost a mom, lost a dad. It has hit close to home. And we know we're not alone. Just look at the numbers. Just look at the numbers. So. Don't mess around this Delta variant that they're talking about now. Mm. Eight times more uh, transmittable. So if you're not vaccinated, you know, it's, it's only a matter of time. So do what you can. Protect yourself. Protect your family. Protect our community. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, Senator Alex Padilla, before we let you go, you talked about growing up in the Valley, listening to Katie when it was AM. <laughs> We're talking about the Mix Masters. <laughs> let, take us into a song right now. One of your favorite hip hop songs that you want us to play. On Kate. Uh, gotta represent, gotta represent. So let's go with the California Love. California oh, Love! So far. You know yeah, what some it is. Inspiration is I'm representing here in the United States Senate. Nice. There it is. We love it. We love Thank it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, before we let you go, I have one last question um, that I want to yeah. ask you. So next week, Dolores Huerta is going to be celebrating her birthday for a celebration fundraiser. Now, Senator Alex Padilla, when I met her, I have to tell you, I cried, I hugged her. She is every woman in my life to me. She is my mother. She is my tia. She's my nina. She's my sister. So I just want to speak on Dolores Huerta as the woman. Like, what does she mean to you? Oh, she's a, a, a tremendous uh, legend and, and pioneer. Uh, we uh, give you know props every year to Cesar Chavez for uh, the leadership uh, example that he, uh, the life that he led, the organizing the United Farm Workers Union. But right by his side, every step of the way was Dolores Huerta. And so uh, just follow her, her life of service, her life of sacrifice, her life of organizing, organizing, organizing. A uh, tremendous example and inspiration in her own right. And, uh, you know, doing it all while uh, while being a wife, being a mom, uh, now being a grandma, too. Uh, she's uh, she, she's still young at heart, but, boy, she active in uh, making her uh, her impact to this very day. So happy birthday, Dolores. I yes, know that's, right. that's her in her 91st, too. Oh, Isn't that now. wow? Amazing. Senator yes. Alex 91 Padilla. years young. That's right. <laughs> Senator Alex Padilla, you are and you know your hip hop, and we thank you for rocking with Cece and Romy here on the morning show. Thank you so much All for right. your service. We salute you, Senator Bless Alex Padilla. Thank you. Gracias. Can't wait to come visit in person.
Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Come on. Take care. <laughs>